right. And we are live. How's it going? I told you I'd be here. <clears throat> Let's see. We gotta get a sound up. Hold on. Uh, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? What do I really, really want? Um what you really want? What does this sound like? It's a starting place. Anybody here? Where is everybody? I'm sitting like, I guess I can scoot over. <laughs> it's too far away from my coffee though. My coffee's way over here. All right, so let's see. I grabbed this. Um. <laughs> uh oh, we're buffering. Nah, just kidding. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> that was the first one. I hate that the screen grab now is gets the cursor. That makes no sense. Aslan, Bruce, Pepper, good to see you. So that was the first episode. It's been two years. I definitely look older. <laughs> it's amazing. Two years can do that. Uh, I was going to grab a bunch of screenshots through the years. Let's see. Uh, if I go, let's see, if I go 50 from that, like lesson... 60, I'm trying to see if, if it gets any point where my hair is like, what the heck? It's funnier to go back in my videos like 12, 13 years. But. <laughs> You're very welcome. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's been, you've, you've gotten better over the last two years. I'm going to tell you, I, uh. You know me, I I, um, I don't practice very much because I'm playing all the time, right? So, you know, my hands stay limber because I'm generally playing guitar multiple times through the day. But I've been, um, uh, I've always been enamored of flamenco guitar and gypsy jazz music. Um, and, and both of those, and including uh, rockabilly, those three styles of guitar playing are very fast oftentimes, and they defy all the rules of playing fast. You know, the, the, the um, main rules of playing fast are to be, have economy of motion. Um, is move as little as possible. The, the further you lift your fingers off the strings, the further you have to go back. The further, you, the harder you pick, the deep... The deeper you dig with your pick, the the deeper you have to dig out. Not warmed up, but um, and so. One of the things you learn is to um, is to, to to minimize as much movement as possible. I even had students stand in front of a wall so that they couldn't lift their fingers off their fretboard very far. The other thing you do is you set up your guitar really really low, set the action up and everything. So I've been, but I've been, always been frustrated with um, my right hand speed on classical stuff. So Monday I decided, okay, I'm going to start doing an hour, hour and a half every day working on Picado studies. And I came up with some exercises. Um, I don't have my flamenco here now, but uh, basically I'm just doing like. One, two, three, four. Like that.
and um, and then doing five and on every string all the way up and all the way down. And I was doing. Well, the crazy thing is, is focused practice like that. I've almost doubled my speed in three days. And it's crazy. I should have started filming this whole thing, the process, because it was like, I, 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 I'm amazed at how much focused practice, which I haven't done in a long time, um, can generate returns. I didn't think at 60 I could get. Um, and so um, I'm going to apply that to some other things, though, in my playing. But um, it's kind of fun. I'm enjoying it. The, the honest truth is if I retired, which I don't think I ever will, you know, I mean, if my mind goes, if I have an accident and my hands don't work anymore, I can, you know, my hands don't work as well as they did. I can still play. I can also still write on the keyboard. I can even, drag, you know, write with MIDI and not even have to use a keyboard. So, um if, but I plan on working until the phone stops ringing. Um, and, uh, but if I ever were to retire, I would probably, for me, retirement would be just learning new skills and still playing guitar, which is funny. Oh, thank you. I'll put the Discord up there. Um, let me grab it. So, I mean, so today um, I thought, well, one thing we could do, let me try to find the drinking game rules. So if anyone's joining us for the first time, this is an interesting time to join me. Um, I don't see any newbies here yet, but you never know. Hi, Max. Hey, Paul. Good to see you. That, uh, yeah, thanks for letting me be background while you work. <laughs> Always good to hear a friendly voice, right? And a voice from our past. I don't know, though. Does my voice sound the same? I, I you know, it's. I still call, like, there's a couple uh, ladies that are, Gosh, I think Ruth is 90-something, and she lived next door, and um, across the street was Mrs. Culp, and I think she's probably got to be 85, maybe pushing 90. And I'll still call them every now and then, because I just love hearing their voice. It's a voice from my childhood, and there's very few of those anymore. Um, and I don't know if, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's kind of sad, but it's also life, but... It's just, hey, thanks, Joseph. Joseph bought me coffee. <laughs> oh, and I got a copyright strike for, for Pink Floyd. Not a strike. I got a shared royalty. Um, so I demonetized it. I don't know if that means they get a piece of the coffee there, the, the four bucks there, Joseph. Um, I'm hoping not because that's not really fair. Um, but I let me look it up real quick because um, I have to go to my this here. Um, oh, let me, let me just, you, okay, I'm going to do another screen grab here. So weird. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm sorry. It's so weird. Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to do screen grabs. Um, okay, so let me pull up. Let me pull up um, that lesson. I want to see something. So they gave me the option to cut out the offending um, bit, okay? Which, that's cool, you know, I, and I totally did it. It was only, it was weird because it seemed like it was towards the beginning. And I'm like, I don't remember. I got to click through all these though, hold on. Um, oh, Mr. Song, okay, here it is. So, let me click on analytics. Okay, so the revenue says I lost four subscribers. That's so weird. 
But I got 40 people watching this right now, which is interesting. Or not 40 people. 40 people in the last... <laughs> Joseph, whatever. <laughs> Joseph's like living living large in uh, Long Beach, aren't you there, Joseph? Would you, don't you live in like Long Beach or something? Um, hey, B. Kitty, what's going on? Um, so, yeah, so they, they kind of... They did did the copyright violation, and then so I un I un um, monetized it, turned that off. Oh, here it is, and then I turned it back on. Well, I cut out the part. I turned it back on. Now it says I'm not sharing. So that's awesome. So I I don't know what it was a it was only like a minute long. So the, if you watch that video, you may it may jump at some point, and that's what it cut out, and it may. I don't remember playing the entire thing until the end. Remember when I pulled out the chart, and I, which I have around here somewhere. And uh, so I was working on Apex Legends last night. So everybody take a sip. Or yesterday, and not last night. Working on another game, Aliens, I think it was, on Wednesday. It was called Aliens something. I don't know if it's related to the movie Aliens. Uh, my, is this fun? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so everybody doing well? Vance, what's going on? It's midnight here in Western Australia. Well, God bless you for staying up. Uh, good to see you. I'm just, we're just celebrating. So two years ago today, I did California and Australia. You know this. Oh, my God. You've, got, you've had the worst of it, and it's ridiculous in my opinion. But we went into lockdown, and they were really encouraging people not even to leave their house. And my wife was a school teacher, but not a school teacher. She was a sub. So she stopped working altogether. Um, and she didn't work for, gosh, she didn't work from March until the fall. Um, and in the fall, she started teaching, she started subbing for a teacher online. So she was able to work from home and she was monitoring kids online and everything and was teaching a class and everything. So she was actually on the other side of the house while I was in here doing my thing. She's on the other side of the house doing the teaching thing. But, but like she had to take six months off. She took six months off. We were a little scared and, and not that much of my work is live. Very little. It's just church for the most part. Just, there was a whole lot of unknown going on, right? So I started doing the best suggested, Hey, why don't you do a live stream every week? Just do, you know, do every Saturday morning or something like that. I said, you know what? I'll just do it every day. So I literally started this every day and I did it for, I think it was 60 days in a row or 62 days in a row, Bruce. And then I went to three days a week. Mainly, I think part of the reason was I was getting tired. And um, I think people, even even then, 60 days in, people were in a lot of states were starting to get, okay, this is over. We're done. And they were getting back to work. And the viewership was starting to go down a little bit. Um, it was amazing, though, because it really impacted revenue um, when I was, it, it really skyrocketed. And I really think a lot, ironically, though, whenever I click on any one of my live stream videos, um, and I look at the, like the, if I, like what this one here, let me go back to the, oh, see, analytics. This is, oh, this is, too, this is the new one. So the last Monday's one, I lost four subscribers. So how, how did it help me gain subscribers? Let me go, <clears throat> let me go to uh, caged. I'll go to the first one, see if I got uh, caged. show all um because that's the first thing i taught i think i did the first 12 lessons were caged met caged method where are they oh here live i need the live ones okay so in the live ones we saw yeah let's see let me just click on randomly i'll click on number the sixth lesson let's see i lost four subscribers there i made three dollars and 62 cents total revenue on <laughs> And nobody's watched it in the last 40 hours. So just to show you, I'm not... Now, the crazy thing is, though, like, let me go to the first one. Well, why did it... Oh, I see. Okay. Um, let me go to that first one. Because that first one has 3,600 views. But then it goes to 1,300, then to 900, 800. So it's crazy. Let me click on the first one and see what the analytics are on that. Yeah, so it's it's still got three views on it. And I gained 25 subscribers. 
<laughs> so weird. Um, so I've made that one made, made seventeen dollars so far in its entirety in two years. <laughs> Wait, let me make sure that's two year. Yeah, that's a two year period. Okay. Now it, some of these have gone up because uh, super chat wasn't enabled back then. So I wasn't able, you know, the super chat is how you guys can tip me. I would like them to do super chat for the comments. I don't know why they haven't done that. Um, I think that would get rid of a lot of the people they would get, you know, cause they take 30%, whatever. Patreon doesn't take nearly, I'm yeah, I don't think Patreon takes 30%. Anybody know? Um, but see, I could use more light, huh? It was washing out before, but now it's yeah, a little bit better. Um, so let me see. I, I gotta, I'm sorry. I gotta read some of these. I apologize. I'm not keeping up. Hey, Christine, what's going on? <laughs> My anniversary. Uh, let's see. Pepper, Tom, God bless you for having these lessons with all these beautiful people. Yeah, I think that's the real blessing, Jack, uh, Pepper, is, is all you guys with each other. I appreciate you guys all being so cool to each other. I know we're from different walks of life, different political bents, different religions, different colors or shapes or whatever, <laughs> whatever we are. But we're all cool to each other because it's all about it's all about just making music. Um uh, it's not you. It's the crazy times right now where anything is distracting. I haven't practiced all this week. All good. Um, hey, Rich Johnson, congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the uh, the views are down um, mainly because people are back to work. I, I'm, I'm not even sure if, you know, early on, so... But I'll tell you, the revenue from streaming every day, even though it was a lot, um, it was five times what it is now, just to give you an idea. So um, when I was streaming every day, my revenue went up five times, basically, from the point of or maybe not quite five times, but just for it was like one month or two months, it went up quite a bit. Um, and that was also cause, because... Not because of the live stream so much, but because the analytics promoted the seven tips for older beginners. I've recorded seven more tips for older, parentheses, all beginners. Um, and I should have said, I think I should have titled it, a better title was seven tips for busy beginners. Is really what I meant to, it would have been a better uh, title, I think. But all of you came, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, pepper. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> All those stop signs. How far up? Let's see. Yep. Uh, okay, which, yep. God bless for having these lessons with all these beautiful people. It's a blessing to you. Um, and you have given lessons two years with pants on. <laughs> right? As far as you know. Well, yeah, pretty much always with pants on. That was Pepper's job to make sure I was wearing pants. Because I know, I know that uh, um, uh, Walter Cronkite never wore pants. He was always sitting there in his underwear. When I was a kid, I met Harry Reasoner <laughs> at the next door neighbor's party, just sitting outside in a chair. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hey, Zach. Oh, shoot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Zach, send me your... So, Zach, I, a friend of mine, Mike Bradford, who uh, plays with... Uh, he's the bass player for... What's the guitar player from Bon Jovi? You guys will know this. Uh, Richie Sambora. So, he plays bass with Richie Sambora. I mean, he's... He, he played uh, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. So he's putting together a band for a, a blues guitarist. Um, a new blues guitarist just got signed. Um, it pays. Um, it's it's good pay for a young kid, I think, a week on a weekly. But um, uh, he's he needs a drummer and a keyboard player. And I figured Chicago would be a good place to go because it's a blues, and the, the act is based out of Vegas. I mean Vegas. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Nashville. <laughs> Nash Vegas, as we call it. <laughs> uh, 
The act is based out of Vegas. So I, I so I was going to give him your number. Uh, he's also a good guy to know. So um, he's a good guy to know, and if he's putting together bands for other things. But Zach, I know how it is. If you if you get a guy, you know, a gig, then he might get you a gig. So I figure if you can get a couple friends gigs, then uh, they may be happy. So and it's a it's like a six week tour. I think that includes England, and then there's a Europe another tour in the fall that pays more. It's bigger venues, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I think a protege of John Bonamassa's. <laughs> cage shapes is you can take it like a C shape make a G shape same shape then the A minor same shape so that way you're just kind of learning those shapes up the neck simple chord progression one one five six four you never to do which is just move the same shape around but this gets you familiar with it and then maybe you could do now you have five uh three shapes that you can go to you know Sure, Zach. I mean, if you're still thinking about moving out here, I think my nephew's thinking about it. Um, uh, you definitely want to come out first. I came out, I spent, what was it? I spent a week out here or two weeks out here. It was like 10 days. I was staying in Riverside though. I didn't know, I didn't know how far stuff was. You have no idea how big it is. I mean, Chicago's a big city, but LA, you could probably fit. 25 Chicago's in the LA area. The, in the area that I actually traverse for work, basically from Santa Barbara to San Diego, you could probably fit 100 Chicago's. <laughs> so, it, although, you know, in Chicago, the cool thing about like living in Nashville, so many of those tours, um, uh, they, uh, they base out of Nashville because you, you can do uh, bus trips to you know, what is it, 50% of the country in eight hours or something like that? I mean, it just makes complete sense. So, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Bruce. I was going to post a screenshot of that here, but I don't know if there's enough room. Uh, I was also going to try to find, let me see, where's the Discord? Okay. So let me see, where would the heck would be? Uh, yeah, I know what those are. I'm old. Pepper, I know what those are. Uh, I'm on Discord right now. So the Discord, there, where would be the, where would be the, <laughs> where is the, the, uh, see, announcements, introductions, uh, introduction, maybe have the drinking. Oh, let me, well, maybe if I, maybe if I enter drinking in search, let's see what happens. Oh, here we go. So, uh, let's see, let me, See, drinking. I'm looking for the drinking game rules. Ah, all right. This is from this is from 20. So it's changed. This is this is only eight of them. So there's only eight here. Okay, wait. It got bigger down here. I think. Uh. 
Okay, next. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the full the full list anywhere. Anybody have it? Hey, Ed, what's going on? Ottawa, nice. Good to have you. I've never been to Ottawa. I, I had, let's see, where was um, Winnipeg? I, I've been to I've been to Toronto, which I didn't. Toronto, well, I mean, Toronto was okay. Vancouver was amazing. It was gorgeous. Uh, Toronto. Well, one thing I remember <laughs> about Toronto is I <clears throat> when I was traveling because I was doing a lot of traveling. I was doing like twelve fly dates a year, teaching clinics. Uh, Part, part most most of my personality that I exude here <laughs> is is from uh, uh, is from teaching those clinics. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, man. <clears throat> so, um, uh, I was teaching clinics for about three years. I did eh, about twelve a year, flying around and went all over the all over the country, and then I also went to uh, South Korea. In Canada a couple times. Um, but when... Oh, okay, thanks. I'll check right now, Bruce. I'll do a screenshot and I'll put it up here. Because um, I, I forget them. I forget all the... Oh, Mod Talk. Okay, where's Mod Talk? i got to find Mod Talk. Mod Talk. Mod Talk. Mod, Mod, Mod. Ah, there it is up here. Ah, it's been a while since I've been on Mod Talk. There's a lot of messages. Um, you said you posted it on Mod Talk? Not seeing it. Um, so, uh, and usually I drove. So I would I would kind of get a map of the city we were going to. This is in the late '90s and um, before GPS, really. Um, and I would get a map and I would memorize the the major highways. Um, and that way, if you got lost, you, you, if you can find a highway, you can usually kind of get centered. Um, and so I, um, and I have a map with me too, but um, I remember that more, the morning of the clinic, it was Saturday morning. What was it that I combined? It was, I just think it was zinc. I took, cause I was taking zinc on the, cause I was on the road a lot. So they said, take zinc. You don't want to get sick. And I'm like, I can't get sick. I want to do, you know, I gotta, I gotta teach these clinics. Hey, Christopher, AJ, what's going on? Sam Stamos is in the house. Um, and, uh, but it made my head, my scalp just started tingling like crazy. And I'm driving and I got a van full of musicians <laughs> going to this clinic. I didn't say anything because I didn't want them to freak out. But I was like, what the heck is going on? And I think it was the combination of, it wasn't the vitamin C and the zinc. I wasn't taking any medication or anything like that. It was just... Something that I had taken, like two vitamins that I'd taken together that, I don't know, for whatever reason had a weird uh, effect on my head. But the other thing about, <laughs> that was my main memory of, well, there were three things I remember about Toronto. I don't remember the clinic at all. I remember going up in the CN Tower and trying to walk out on that glass and I couldn't do it. Um, and then, uh, but we had dinner up there. It was awful food up there. I remember that. And then the other thing, it was just like, it felt like it was just apartment building after apartment building after apartment, these giant towers, just like dominoes on the, throughout the city. Kind of reminded me of Bronx, which I never liked. You know, New York City and the Bronx, it's just so depressing. Brooklyn, that, the, that part of Brooklyn and Bronx. So, Oh, I'm glad you have lots of good memories, Christine. It's just, I was literally there for, like, flew in Thursday, through, flew out Sunday kind of thing. So, uh it, I'm sh and and then like I said, usually in every town we went in, we had a road manager that would be in charge of everything, and he used to be on tour with Promise Keepers, and they always went to the best restaurants. So we got for after our clinic, they always took us to one of the, and we still got a per diem. It was like a hundred dollars a day, and uh, <laughs> oh my nephew, oh I'm so bummed. He's get he's on tour right now. This is like today. He's getting twenty dollars a day per diem. I was like, oh, ouch. That's just, that's just bad. Hey, Timothy, what's going on? So anyway, that was kind of my memory of Toronto, but 
Um, I have great memories of also almost every city I went to on those clinics. I go, oh, I love this city. You know, um, there was something great about every place we went to. So thank you, Christopher. Yeah, so two years, uh, 250 50 lessons. Originally, I started out doing every day for 60 days or 60. But then I was kind of getting tired and the viewership was down. So I went to three days a week and ended up finally down to one day a week. I think, right? That, is that right, Bruce? I went five, uh, seven, three, one. <clears throat> and then um, it's funny to look at that first one and then to pull up the, the chat because I leave the chat in there. Uh, I was like, I don't recognize any of these names. Some of these people were just there for that first lesson, whatever, but uh, they didn't come back. But it's funny because that that one, what did I say? How much did it? Oh, it's gone now. Less than 67. Uh, oh, yeah, that one I yeah earned $17 on. <laughs> so, But then this one here, you know, it's like, Less than 67, it says I made, uh, was it $3? Not even $3. So, not that I'm in it for the money, but. Uh, analytics. Oh, that's weird how it did it. Okay. So, um, okay. Trying to find. Oh, and I, uh, Dennis, are you here? Dennis isn't here, right? Dennis changed the name in the in the picture. It's a little easier to find now because I, I I think people were like, um, is this your is this your page? You know, is this your? They weren't sure. Oh wait, there's Gary. <laughs> That's funny. There's a lot of a lot of commentary on here that I'm not aware of. It's funny, especially when people are talking about you. That's kind of it's a, kind of a new thing. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got going. Hey, Holly. Okay. Yeah. Be safe. Holly is, is one of our long longtime moderators as well. Charlie B, good to see you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, knowledge, experiences, and music during two years. We will remember for any number of reasons. You will, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be a rock for me. Yeah, I hope so. I have nothing else. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. That's what I said. That's exactly what I told him, Max. I said, yeah, <laughs> McDonald's. He goes... No, I think the, the leader of the band doesn't like McDonald's, you know, like as a corporation or something. So maybe she worked for in high school or something. I don't know. I think he just, I think he just buys food at the grocery store. I don't think, I think, a, I think a, a meal at Wendy's is $11. <laughs> so it's like, I don't even think $20 gets you three McDonald's meals. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Everybody got any questions? I know this is kind of a, a unusual, what are we talking today? We're just, we're just celebrating. This is, that's that, uh, right there, right here. <laughs> that's me two years ago. <laughs> and I do look younger. I'm like, dang it. Now I, that, I, that was also, remember I was used, I wasn't using OBS, which I think is a better way to do it. OBS is the, uh, broadcasting software. That allows me to put things up here. Before, remember, I was holding up <laughs> sheets of paper, like drawing things and then holding them up. Uh, so you could do screenshots. Remember that? So those days are behind. Yeah, no no quiz on this. Uh, oh, I could I could quiz you though. I could say, hey, what were some of the top? What were some of the themes? Remember, we did bluegrass. Um, I'm trying to get uh, Rescato down that Alex can do and I can't do. I don't know why I can't do it. I can do multiple rescatos, which is that, you know, the flamenco thing, the... Um, I can do a lot of them, but I can't do the one that everybody does, which is the main one. It's like, thumb up, 
fingers down, thumb down. I it's I have a hesitation that I can't get rid of. But I, I actually watched a video on YouTube and uh, basically just said take it slow. And, of course, that's exactly right. Um, Holly says, Tom, this community has meant so much to me in these strange times. Thank you so much and bless you. Good sir. I appreciate that, Holly. I appreciate you guys, uh, you and Dennis and Bruce, too, just for being there. Almost almost without fail. It's like, how, how do you guys justify spending three hours sometimes? At least two hours with me every Monday. But I appreciate it. And, and I, my goal is to make sure that we have stuff up here that people can refer to. And, you know, I wish it were like not so much, sometimes not so much talking and more teaching, but I don't wish that. I like what we do. I don't have any, I have any, and, but other people wish that it was like, well, get to the lesson. Uh, who was it that was going through and marking, lesson starts at 1842 or whatever. So it's like, it's very funny. Yeah, be safe, Holly. Um, fall of 2000 is when Sam, yep. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we we prayed for your dad. I, your dad is like, it's insane. Plus, he had hip surgery. And now he's walking without a walker. And he's like 900 years old, right? <laughs> it's like, he's really old. It's like Michiko's at, at church, you know, she's like, she's Japanese. And there's something about those Japanese genes. She just keeps fighting cancer and doing you know doing really well so hopefully she, you know, she's on another new treatment but she feels great and she's on tour uh, I would like to use amp software but I don't like latency the only interfer uh, interfaces that give lowest latent direct, uh, a Thunderbolt hmm um, you know I've never had a problem with latency it's it's usually the buffer you have to set um, oh and here, here's one thing I, okay, so let's say I have Logic Pro up, okay? I have, right now, I have, I don't know, there's no latency here. Now, are you talking about using it through an amp and, like, for live? Hey, right, Alex? <laughs> Um, I use, um, mine's not Thunderbolt because my computer doesn't have Thunderbolt. Um, in fact, I'm getting ready to buy a new computer. Probably may happen this week. Um, so, uh, I'm using the Apogee Duet. Um, yeah, and it, here's the thing. I, I have my, uh, I, my buffer is, I think, 256. I don't ever have a problem. But if I put... Mastering software on the, you know, if I put a bunch of mastering plugins on the master output, then I have buffering issues. Right now, I've got about 30 tracks open with amps loaded. None of them turned off. I've got, you know, my processor, even on an old computer, isn't even, not even at 5% CPU usage. So, um, so when I have problems is when I plug in, when I have a lot of string plugins, like the really heavy duty string stuff that then I have to eventually commit to my string parts and which is difficult sometimes. And, um, hold on. There we go. But yeah, my buffer, I think is set. Let me check my buffer right now. I don't know what it's set. Uh, preferences general. Would that be under audio? Yeah. 256. That's pretty much where I leave it. So I don't have any problems. Um, what, uh, what other settings do I have? It also depends on what software you're using. But if you're using it live, I mean, I've played with people years ago, 20 years ago, well, not 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that played through a laptop live, and he didn't have any buffering issues. So um, you have a Mac Mini Intel. Mac Mini. Um, yeah, you should be fine. The Yeah, the, the Duet I have is USB. In fact... I didn't think about that. You know, if I get a new, if I get that new, uh, there's a new Mac that just came out. Um, I don't know if they're coming out with new iMac Pro. So now I have to buy a monitor. Um, I thought about getting one of those big giant wraparound monitors, but um, I, I'm, I think you'd be doing this too much. And I don't know if that's necessarily helpful. Although I can keep everything in the middle that I need and then there could be ancillary stuff. I have another monitor here. So maybe it's not any different than that. Um, 
but I thought about getting one of those. Uh, but Mac has something called the just they just it's a brand new thing um, called a Mac Studio, and it's like a mini on steroids. And base salary base price is two thousand dollars. I think the one I I'd probably beef it up quite a bit, and it probably be for me it's going to be about thirty five hundred. I think just for the computer. And then the monitor, I could probably get. I've got a TV I could use, but I don't want. I want good. I want good resolution, and I don't want to spend sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars on their monitor. Just crazy. Oh, thank you, Christine. <laughs> yes. God bless you. Take care. Uh, um. Yeah. Um, oh, is it, oh, Alex is asking, is, is it an M1? Uh, yeah, so Alex, I, I mean, I can still probably use my Apogee until I get a, another. I, I think I want to upgrade to maybe the, um, to the uh, Apollo. Uh, but, you know, I have to, it's, a, it's a big outlay. You know, when you add up the computer and the monitor, and then if I have to get new out, new uh, uh, converter, probably looking at five to six thousand dollars. So, um, hey, Quail, yeah, we just talked about that. We talked about it briefly. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, I, it's a write off for me. I can, you know, it's it's my business, it's my job. I wouldn't buy it if I weren't doing this. Um, but I think the the Mac Studio is actually a pretty cool computer, Alex. I don't know if you've seen it. Just just got released. They're taking orders for it. Um, I think they start taking orders. Uh, they they start taking them yesterday or two days ago, so the sixteenth. So you might want to check that. out. Oh, it'll warp your mind until you get used to it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I I'm not sure. If I would like it or not, my friend Stephen has one. I asked him. I, we we were working yesterday together. He has one, and I was going to ask him if he recommends something like that. I think he probably would. Uh, but he's working on games, so he probably you know has the video of the game here. He's got all his you know. I saw someone that they had literally their entire mixing board, like forty channels, all open, like in one thing. It was like it's the only time he's ever been able to see all his faders at once. Uh, so that's kind of nice. I think, but I don't, I don't really, I don't even ever have Mixer View up. I've always got, I don't even know what this window is called. Um, what window is this technically? Window. Um, screen set tracks. I don't know. I think it's just a tracks window, I think is what it's called. Yeah, that's what it says. So um, that's, that's what I prefer because that's, I basically, that's my workflow. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what, what I've done and what I've got to do. Um, so I'm, you know, first thing I do when I like when Austin sen sends me a track with has like he's got mandolin and maybe oud and bass and electric guitar and acoustic guitar, twelve string, whatever. Then I'll I'll put I'll I'll have all that MIDI there which has the notes and I turn that into music. And then in between all the MIDI tracks, I'll put the the audio track that corresponds with the MIDI above it. So that way, if I ever want to just enlarge the thing, like I had to do it, I had to do it, um, yes, yes, uh, two days ago. He sent me the 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 tune that we that he sent me was in seven eight, and I don't know. I mean, seven eight's not. I don't. I can groove in seven eight, no problem, you know. But this just. And it's fortunately it was just one note. See, that's all. It's a D note. That's a bass clef. Um, and that's a dun, 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 dun. Okay, that part's no problem. But then when it got to the syncopations, I was like, uh, no. So what I did was I cheated. I, I changed the, that song into 4-4, four, four, printed the chart, and then, and then, believe it or not, this is much easier for me to read. Um, and, uh, even though it's syncopated, it's written in four. So I uh, just kind of ignored the accent on every seventh note. But that that was that's what I had to do for that. But okay, take care, Timothy. Good. Thank you.
Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I didn't know that, Sam. That's good to know. Um, well, I have a gear here. So, playback speed normal. What are the options? Oh, no, that's that's that thing. Quality. Oh, I see. You can go to seven. Okay. If, if you lower the quality, is it faster? Okay. Um... Yeah, the studio I think is the, is kind of the new. Um, I mean, it's. I think base is thirty two gigs, but of RAM, but um, it's the new M one chip, which is like totally different processing for the for the RAM. So the, having thirty two gigs of RAM is like having one hundred and twenty eight. It's it's a it's a whole other level. Uh, so I think thirty two. Well, I think I go to 64. You can go higher. I think I'll go to 64. It was only like $200 more, which isn't bad. Um, and then I think it was $200 or $400 more to get the... See, I like to have a, a bigger hard drive because I like to have the software on my home drive. Like Logic software is on the home drive. Um, what am I using on my home drive right now? I don't think I'm using that much. Uh, yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm, I think I've got a terabyte on this old Mac. I mean, this, this Mac is storage. Yeah, I've got over a terabyte, and um, I've only used 464. I've moved a lot of stuff off of here. So, uh, Music 3, I still got a lot, so that's good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> this is for people viewing the stream. There's a timing lag from time to time when your video lags behind the chat. By speeding up the video and catching up, the delay is reduced. Ah. Have you seen a new Gibson Theodore? No, I have not. They just found an old Ted McCarty design from the 60s and they are now releasing it. Kind of funky. I'm going to look it up right now. That's my grandfather's first name. Theodore Alvin Straley, actually. Two hours ago. Wow. Oh, interesting. The picture's not there. Why are you not? Oh, oh, that is weird. It's kind of like, uh, is that like a Firebird headstock? Interesting. Kind of reminds me of a Rickenbacker for some reason. It's got soap bar pickups. black one's kind of cool. What are they selling them for, though? <laughs> Do I want to know? What is the headstock from? Yeah, it's a Firebird headstock. Oh, Sam's already there. Looks like a tulip. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It totally looks like a tulip. Yeah, that's weird. Well, but you know what? It, some of the best designs are right out of nature, you know, and that looks like it would fit your hand and your body really well. Um, images. Weird. Yeah, they're they're really the only one that has the. That must have just popped up on your feed, huh? <clears throat> on your Instagram feed or something like that. It's cool. I like it. Would I buy one? Probably not. <laughs> if they give me one, would I take it? Sure. <laughs> I'll play it. I'll play it on my live stream like every week if they give me one. P90s, I know. P90s can be a little bit noisy, <clears throat> so I, you know, I've got a. I wanted a P90 guitar, so I was looking at vintage SGs, and a, and then I discovered that uh, Paul Reed Smith made one, so I got the Ted McCarty, the McCarty model, Paul Reed Smith with so far. It's probably really similar to what that one would sound like. Oh, Williams. Okay, yeah. So he. What did he, he doesn't have one, does he? Did he just post a picture of it? So, oh, it's 5K. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, there's guys out there that just like, they got to have every model that Gibson's ever made, and I get that, but they're collectors. So, uh, I need to make friends with one of those collectors. <laughs> right, Alex? 
I wonder where you find one. You'll see one maybe. I'm touching my face. I, I think I got cat hair on my face or something. It's just like, ah. Um, the, uh, yes, oh, Alex's buddy. Yeah, well, he, I like his, his, uh, yeah, I, 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 I just don't think I could ever own a flying V. But uh, um, he made a great Firebird for you. I mean, the one he made for you, which was kind of a, a kind of a factory, like second, I guess you could call it. Hmm. My knees hurt. Yeah, and so some people really like the Flying V. Um, uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know, and and you can play them like this, right? That's kind of like was. I think part of the design was to sit more like a classical guitarist and play. Because the, the guitar goes back to the 50s, right? Was it a, a late 50s or early? Maybe it's early, maybe 1960. Um, so people were still thinking, because, you know, back then, I mean, acoustic guitar, like folk singers were using nylon guitars. That's why my folk singer guitar is basically a nylon neck, even a nylon body. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is a nylon bridge. It's like a steel string bridge. And it even has the flamenco pick guards on it on each side, although the bottom one fell off before I got it. But my um, my folk singer, it, it was uh, from six, mid '60s, and uh, you know the pick the pick guards and everything because kids are using picks today. And I always said, well, these damn kids will scratch up the top, so let's stick plastic all over the wood. <laughs> it's like which is worse? Yeah, the flying V. Yeah. Although I think on the down here they have, don't they have like a, a piece of foam or something like that, like some kind of weird stick them so that they can sit on your lap. But yeah, it's, but you would, if you were sitting down, you would play it like, like this. Okay. You would put the, the V on either side of your right leg, assuming you're right, right handed. Yeah. Ted McCarty. Well, Ted McCarty also designed the guitar that I have the, uh, McCarty, McCarty model so far that I have from, from uh, Paul Reed Smith. The other thing is it's fairly noisy, although um, noise is less of an issue now with, with gates, but also with uh, uh, the software you can use to get rid of, you know, the noise cancellation software and stuff. <clears throat> the new Fender Player? I haven't seen that. What's that look like? It's just Fender.com, right? Uh, I hope they don't have music. Player plus MIDI. Oh, okay. Player plus. No, go away. Wow. Well, some websites are just plain annoying. <laughs> I mean, the Fender website. So, Player Plus. You're talking about the Meteor Meteora Meteor Meteor. Uh. <laughs> How do you say that? Uh, the Jazz Master Contemporary. So let me just enter in their search. I'll just do Player. Play. Oh, did you say Strat? Sorry. You said player Strat, right? Buh, 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 buh. You guys just start talking about gear. Oh, 58. Okay. Gibson was the year that they came out. Uh, why not? What about new Fender player? <clears throat> Rubber pad for the leg. Yeah, I thought so. <clears throat> wow. 57 is when the flying... March 57. Okay. Yeah, it's just funny. I mean, the thing is, my my Ramirez has pick guards, but you can't see them. I mean, it's like I tried to get them to show up on the live stream a couple days ago, and I couldn't couldn't get it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> what's so player? Um, of the player tell so they just everything has player before it so in other words it's a, a, a reasonably priced one I'm assuming they're made in Mexico or Japan but the new the newest one looks like the player plus 
Meteora or whatever. It's kind of cool, but I mean, it's, it's it got two humbuckers. Maple. This one has a maple neck. The Acoustasonic thing, I, people have been trying to do this for years, even, you know, just get an acoustic guitar. I don't know. I'm just not a, the hybrid thing, I mean, there's three sounds, in my opinion, acoustic sound, electric sound, and then the piezo mic, or piezo thing. Alex has a, a nice combo pickup on his guitar. My baritone has a combo pickup with a microphone and a, which is funny, because I had to re-record some stuff. Um, let's see, what was that? I was playing baritone. Okay, so this one, um, <clears throat> that this set, this this thing, the seven eights thing, was played on um, six tracks, doubling that. So I'm playing it on bass, and then bass with fuzz, and then I'm playing it on actually baritone. But I'm using my seven string that I just got. Um, for some reason, I, I don't, my brain doesn't fart out when I play the seven string like it does when I play the baritone. Uh, I don't feel like I have to transpose. So I played um, that, and then I went through a harmonizer pedal down an octave that was the, my cheap harmonizer pedal that is an amazing $50 harmonizer. And um, here, I'll show you. I think you can get them right now. They kind of come and go. When they're discontinued, they're, they, these things go up to like $500. If you can get one of these, they're great. The Ultra Shifter Harmonizer, I think it's US 600. Um, I have three of them just because they're made of plastic and I'm afraid I'm going to break them. But it, it's got multiple modes, pitches. It's actually got a smart harmonizer in there too, I think. Uh, yes, a harmonist, you can select the key. Um, the the, the latency is not great on it. Um, however, that's that's the, exactly what I'm looking for. And it also does a whammy bar. So you can do this and it goes up or down an octave or whatever interval you want to do. Bear, yeah, it's a Behringer, just a very cheap one. But I was kind of in a, in a period of time where I was buying cheap pedals, and I just stumbled on this one for 50 bucks. I went, oh, okay, I'll try it. And I got it, and I was like, damn, this is really cool. So I bought two more just to have. Um, and uh, I, I really like it a lot. I still use it on stuff. I, I like to use it on pop things, but I use it to create weird sounds. Um, and so knocking a guitar or a baritone down an octave just creates this, you know, this kind of loose sound. And then I was doing baritone acoustic mic doubling that part and then baritone acoustic through that harmonizer. Well, when I was going direct, I was thinking, oh, I could just use the, I can use my speakers. I don't have to put my ears in because whenever I put my ears in, I feel like I'm really damaging my hearing because I always turn it too loud and the click is cat, 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 you know. So, um, yeah, right, Alex. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alex is like, don't give away the secret. I know. I know. That's why I've been hoarding them. We use them on a hit and then we can say, hey, yeah, we can sell them for, you know, $1,000 each. Um, what is a, I've got a, I paid 500 for that pedal. Um, what do they go for now? Not that one. Um, let's see. Lutron Biface. What do those go for? I don't have the pedal for it, but Lutron by phase. I haven't done, oh gosh, I hate it when it does that. I clicked in the search window. I mean, I've seen them, oh, yeah, they're getting way up there. 30, 38, 3,900, 2,600, 3,000, holy cow. 3,100, this one is the bond, this has the pedal. 2,500, there's the cheapest one. Here's a, a new version of it that's crazy for 1800 by page two sustainably shipped yeah so those are really going up i remember when they were 1500 i thought 500 was a lot of money <clears throat> so they've released a new version of it but um i've hardly touched it you know i bought it because it was one of those uh pedals I wished I could have afforded when I was a kid. So when I got to have money in an adult, I bought one. <laughs> hey, Mugu. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, yeah, you can, yeah, the Sam, you can find those pretty cheap, but when they, when they discontinue them for a period of time, for whatever reason, then they shoot up. I mean, we saw Alex, didn't we see them for like 300 or something like 350, 400 bucks for a while because they were discontinued. We're like, dang. Um, but anyway, so 
I was recording that um, baritone, and I don't, once I track something and I know I got it, I don't usually listen back, but I was listening, well, then, I, then I tracked the acoustic, so I was use, using a mic and I put the ears in, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing a weird click sound, and when I was recording the plugged-in bar acoustic baritone, the microphone in the baritone was picking up the click track. So that was, it wasn't just the pickup that was going to the, uh, the direct signal. Um, it was, uh, it was other stuff. So it was kind of like, oh man, the, uh, so I had to re-record all that <laughs> track because I, I, fortunately I heard it. Usually I might not have, you know, heard it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know that anyone paid a thousand for them. We should start putting them up there. Like. You put like original, like serial number, early serial number, date code. It says 1307. So what does that mean? That's just a code. 2013, seventh month, maybe. 2013, <laughs> whatever. So I don't know. That's, I don't really have, I mean, I'm just not, I haven't bought a pedal in years. It's been a while. Probably the last time I bought a pedal was another one of those. Um, what was the last? Pe yeah, I can't remember. Oh, probably the thing I used for touring, you know, for playing in uh, uh, Louisville. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Alex is from my... <laughs> he, he saw a clown. I didn't tell you not to buy it. I just said, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I didn't tell you not to buy it. You can't blame me for that. Because probably because, you know, I mean, because you at the time they were going for. No, he no, the, the Behringer actually went up to a thousand dollars at one point. Um, the Klon, yeah, the Klon, if you try to find one of those, the, he, it was the gold one, too. Right. Which I think is that's like for some reason, I think they're identical. Right. The, gold, the silver and the gold or the bronze or whatever color that is. So the Elon Klon, so they corrected Klon to Elon <laughs> and capitalized it. Hilarious. <laughs> I may have said, I may have said $500 is too much for an overdrive, but I, you know, I still didn't tell you to, you know, you, <laughs> did you, you didn't take all of my advice <laughs> in life. <laughs> I told you not to play guitar for a living. <laughs> you didn't take that advice. <laughs> yeah, I paid two, yeah, $20 for a new Behringer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've actually, do I have any other Behringer? Yeah, I've got a bunch of Behringer pedals because I just thought, you know, they were so cheap that, um, Do I have right here? They're so cheap. I just thought, well, what the heck? Oh yeah, like this, the bass synthesizer. I think I got that for thirty dollars. It's actually kind of cool. Um, you plug your guitar into it, it sounds like a bass synth. It's got lots of different modes, waveforms and things like that. Decay, direct, reson, re, uh, you can do, you know, like a, uh, resonance and all that stuff. Kind of cool. Here's a pedal I bought that I've never once even used. The uh, Pigtronics envelope phaser i it was my neighbor who had it and i i was buying he was getting rid of a lot of pedals and i just bought everything here's the most complex pedal that i've ever owned this thing the adrenaline oh my gosh you need a phd to run this thing this is probably one of my holy grails i love this pedal that's a great pedal i just wish it had uh, indicator lights that tells you it's on. I, I thought about modding it to have put indicator lights on at some point, if I actually use it a lot. I don't remember where I got this. I think somebody gave this to me, right, Alex? Is this one of the ones that What's-Her-Name gave us? But I don't think so, because I took this to get fixed by Dave. Uh, I've had this for longer. I don't know where I got this from. But Dave uh, Friedman fixed this. So that would have been a long time ago. He also customized my, uh, my 
Yeah, I, I got a lot of pedals I never use. It's not, it's not my thing. 10K for a clon. <laughs> Would you have kept it, Alex? Would you have sold it? I mean, $10,000 is a lot of... You know, that's a lot. At some point, it's like, if you, if you, if you could, like, take your clon and you found a pedal that sounded exactly and interacted exactly in the knobs every time you turn a knob it, they were identical would you get rid of the clon <laughs> who would you keep it oh okay yeah i bought that one it was early ebay maybe it might have been one of those pedals that i go oh i had this as a kid so i want to get it again um <laughs> like the what was it the the fox wah and then the plastic wah which i think was a k wah but i had a red one um, what was that? Is that right? Um, let's see. Reverb. Let me pull up reverb. Somebody, the Fox Wah had like fuzz on it. Fox Fuzz Wah, I think. Oops. The heck? This is the, they're the worst website. I literally typed everything in and it just took me down the page. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so Fox Fuzzwa, oh, octave volume, octave. It does everything. It had like a ton of different things in it. My, I think mine was black bass. So it was black on black. I was think it was something like this. They have red ones and blue ones and yellow ones. Yeah, this thing's in horrible shape. I can't imagine it works. Maybe it does. I was on an any summer, huh? Well, that could be. Uh. Oh, you're saying I bought the, I bought the, I, so I bought the, the uh, flanger on eBay, um, and I sold it. You could buy a clone that was close enough. I was on an anti -sever. I remember it distinctly. All right. Hilarious. Alex remembers stuff better than I do. Um, yeah, Fox Wah. Yeah, that, there it is. Yeah, and there's no bi battery bypass. So a lot of these pedals, you know, you don't have battery bypasses. So you've got you've you've got to you've got to put a battery in it. Um, I remember yeah, the feet on that. I had that thing. I think I probably sold it for five dollars or something. I know I, I, I know I sold a, a Fender, like, it was a silver face. I had a, I had a Fender, um, was it, so is it, the, was it a K-Wa, the plastic one, K-Wa? I think it was K. Yep, there it is. $251. This may be the one I sell, sold for, uh, for, um, no, Oh, he, the Edge uses this? That's, is that right? I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah, these things, the the bases, the bottom, the rubber thing would deteriorate. It would just rot. Um, this one's in pretty good shape. Again, you know, no battery bypass. You open, have to open it up. There is literally nothing to the electronics on this thing. It's very, very simple. You could probably get the schematic for it and fix it. But yeah, I remember the paint coming off. I just put a link there. You can check it out. I remember the paint coming off. It basically had you know, what, what the switch did. It says on off. Yeah, that's right because <laughs> it didn't have a didn't have a foot switch, so you literally had to bend over and turn on and off the wah pedal. I mean, it would be a good one to have um, if you had like a, a switching system and you could have it bypass. But, yeah, Daisy, yeah. Hey, Gary, what's going on? Alex and I are having a conversation <laughs> about, about gear I've owned and about gear I told him not to buy. <laughs> oh, and Dennis, sorry, you're here too. Sorry. I, uh, I didn't see you earlier. Um, 
All right, so mod. Where's, where's the mod? Where's the mods? I'm not, I'm not seeing the mod channel. All right, let's see. Yeah, although that that pedal, um, I didn't know that the Edge used that pedal, that wa that plastic wah pedal. That was like my first pedal. Um, what else did I have? I had a Distortion Plus, which I have. I have a, I have a beat up one and a real one. Here, so I have one of those still. This is not. This is actually I got from someone who gave it to me. Uh, the the original one I had. It was my first distortion pedal. Um, this was another one I had back in the day, and this one I didn't. I I got rid of, and then somebody gave me one. I think maybe. I don't remember. I don't remember where that came from. Again, Alex is my. Yeah, this. Yeah, no, th I got this look. This thing is a cool pedal. It, you know, if you really utilized it, what it could do the head rush. I got this for nineteen dollars new, or twenty nine dollars. I was on a. This is the no. Okay, so that was twenty nine dollars, um, and then the Intelliphase was, which is, uh, can be a regular phaser, but it also has uh, touch sensitivity. I got this for nineteen dollars on American Musical Supply. In fact, I was on about. American Musical Supply about six months ago, just out of curiosity, because they would do these blowouts. Like Akai made a bunch of pedals, and then they decided to cancel the whole thing. And that head rush is interesting because the way it's designed is um, you have one input and four outputs, and you can control the heads. Like I'm not sure how you, if you would ever do it. I mean, you could do it in the box now so easily. I could place, you know, but the idea, I guess, was to simulate. Um, a multi-head tape deck and or multi-head tape delay and I guess what they would do is take a, a an, an output from each um, head and uh, put it in different speakers or to left right left right kind of thing or whatever I don't know I you know or amps you could have four amps why who would want to have four amps on stage it's like who wants to set up, up all that just so you can have a that you're the only one that's going to hear anyway <laughs> The hair lip, that's right. And that was one of those things where it was portrayed, it was, it said it was an echo, but it was not. That was, yeah, hear your guitar in 5-1. Yeah, that would be, uh, and we've talked, Barton and I have talked about doing that because I he's he's threatened to take me to uh, um, uh, Capitol and set me up with my rig there. And we, instead of having stereo outputs, I would just do five, one outputs or seven, one or whatever. And, um, and then play that way. And that way I can hear my guitar and all of it. Cause they, when they mix the stuff that we do, it's often in seven or five, one, <clears throat> which is crazy. <clears throat> the echo rip. So the, so the, um, the hair lip, it said it was an echo. So I thought I was buying an echo. What it really is, is an on off, to, uh, uh, on off uh, tremolo so it was so most tremolos have kind of a sine wave you know like it's like a fender trim kind of, you know like you're turning the volume up and down with a knob like that um, the hair lip I guess it was a hard square wave and I I don't think that there really had been anybody out there before that with a square wave tremolo so they marketed it as, as a um, let's see if I can put a, tr a square wave on this so you can hear what I'm talking about. Um, they market it as a echo, an echo because, so I got this sound. Okay, so let me put a square wave tremolo. Let's see, where would that be? All right, so 
smoothing off. Okay, that's panning. I don't want panning. Uh, oh, I see. I can do this. Okay. Now I want 100%. Okay. <laughs> so that, because I'm hitting a note and letting it ring, it's an echo. And it's, that's not an echo. <laughs> but that's how they marketed it. So I should have got my money back on it. I, I, I think I sold it. <laughs> but Alex, how much your hair lips go now? <laughs> Electronics hair lip. I don't want to. Oh, gosh. Okay. Hair lip. How was it? It was spelled like, like the rabbit hair, I think. Hair lip. I think. No. Something's got to come up. Do you find it? Big muff. I just see a bunch of big muffs. I, I saw it at one point. I was like, um, somebody will have it on a, a website. Yeah, here it is. Here, yeah, it was printed, spelled that way. Microphone echo. Not a microphone echo. There's nothing. Okay, so let me change the. I don't. Oh, I don't think there was any here. No. No. Uh, it is a pretty rare one. The only people that would want it are the people that collect, that want to have one of everything. Electro harmonics made. Um, yeah, it was ultimately, and I'm looking at the knobs and I'm like, well, that... so the knobs were volume, speed, and echo. Uh, yeah, it was a tremolo. Yeah, I don't even, yeah, there's people who have talked about it. I've read about it before. I just can't find those sites right now. But, it, yeah, that was definitely one of my first pedals. Uh, but the the flanger, I, I don't think I own that one. I think that was, they had it at the store, and I borrowed it. Oh, yeah, I forgot I have the tremolo. Echo. Isn't that funny? It's like not an echo. So, um, took that pick on my way to work. Sam Simmons' song is five beers deep. <laughs> True enough. All right, I should probably get going. Where everybody's taken off. I and it's it's been an hour. How long did I? Oh, an hour and twenty minutes. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you so much for being here, Bruce. Thank you for helping me remember. Um, I will see you guys uh, soon. I will see you Monday. I don't have a song for Monday yet. Uh, and I did get a copyright strike on mon this past Monday's song. Um, they said uh, copyright uh, royalty sharing, but they gave me the option to cut it out. And it was only like a minute of the video I cut out at the begin towards the beginning of the video, which is weird because I didn't play the whole song until the end. Um, so I'm not sure why they cut out – why – why it was only the first part of the video that that fell there but uh bless you too pepper thank you so much for 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 watching and i know school's probably got you slammed 
I love you too, Alex. I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow, right? You're going to be at church tomorrow to help us get going with the, we got another new drummer tomorrow. So, uh, in fact, I got to find out if cops is going to play the acoustic weekend. So anyway, I will talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, Monday, we'll do another song. Let's see. We did an acoustic song, so it'll be an electric song. Uh, so I've got to find something. Um, it may not be as contrarian as the last one. I'll try to pick one maybe that's a little bit bigger of a hit, but also try to pick one that um, we can all play. Okay. Thanks a lot. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.